Look at verse 20, because Jesus not only condemns worldliness and calls for saints to come out of worldliness and describes how worthless they are and how transient and how passing, but chapter 18, verse 20, Jesus celebrates the end of worldliness. Worldliness uses the deafening spell of entertainment. Look at verse 20. Rejoice over her, O heaven, you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. That's because worldlings refuse to listen to God's servants. Verse 21, then a mighty angel took up a stone and cast it down and says, with this violence, Babylon will be thrown down and not found anymore. They lost their opportunity to live forever, by the way. Instead, they'll die forever. But look at verse 22. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpets will not be heard. No more music. No more tunes to drown out your problems. You ever notice that's the, the panacea of the world? They just turn the music up a little louder. It's turned up a little louder. Drowns out their problems. Gone will be diversions, music, entertainment are shut down. The work that captivated so many, keeping them from spiritual things, ceases. The regular grind, the millstone of life stops. There is nothing left to hide the thoughts of God. There are no diversions. There are no distractions. You notice in verse 11 of chapter 18, the profits of commerce end. Verse 14, the enjoyment of exotic commodities ends. In verse 21, all of materialism, the whole system is burned. In verse 22, the very sounds of life and music and industry and home cease. And finally, in verse 23, even light and social life. I mean, even lights and everyday social life, it all ends. Why? Because of the sorceries. Look at verse 23, the last of it. It says, for by your sorcery, the word is pharmakeia. It's a word for drugs. And it's another allusion to the fact that not only is the world so intoxicating, it's like being addicted to drugs, but also in this period of time, substances and drugs will be so prevalent as they are in our world. God says, you've been intoxicated and you didn't hear my voice, then there's no hope. What idols do we need to watch out for today? What are some of the deadly modern idols? Well, if we look at some of the old ones the Lord condemned in the past and then look around us, we'll see that there are modern counterparts everywhere. For instance, the oldest book in the world is probably the Old Testament account of Job. It's the oldest record of man's struggle with idols. Listen to Job 31. If I have put my trust in gold, verse 24 says, if I have said to pure gold, you are my security. If I have rejoiced over my great wealth and the fortune my hands have gained, if I have regarded the sun in its radiance or the moon moving in splendor. See how... He equates worship of money just like idolatrous worship of the heavenly hosts. Then these also will be sins to be judged, for I will be unfaithful to God on high. You know what was an idol in the Old Testament? Money. You know what's an idol today? Money. Did you know there are actually people that will give up their church family, their church home, the discipleship relationships, the accountability relationships, just to make a few thousand more dollars? And they'll move off to another city, and oft times they will move away from the Lord, and they will move away from their families, and they'll move away from the close relationship with their wife just because they want to make a few thousand dollars more. It's amazing, the idol of money, what it does to us. The Old Testament prophet Habakkuk warned us through his warning to the Israelites that they could begin to worship their career, their job, their occupation, or even the technology of the day. You say, really? Yeah, Habakkuk 1 says this. The wicked pulls up with hooks, catches in his net, gathers them in his dragnet, rejoices and glad, then he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his dragnet. Do you understand the concept? He's so thankful that as a fisherman he caught fish that he pulls up the instrument he caught the fish with and he puts it in front of him and he burns sacrificial incense and bows down and says, thank you, net, thank you, net. That's what people do with their jobs. They don't realize that God gave them the strength. God gave him the ability. God gave him the privilege. He even gives us our breath to breathe today. And instead of thanking God and saying, God, do you want me to invest all my life in this that's going to pass away? Or do you want me to invest more of my life in what won't pass away? They start worshiping the job or the technology. This is what the Apostle Paul says in the New Testament church, Philippians 3.19. He said, beware of the potential idol of your appetite and physical desires. Philippians 3.19 says their destiny is destruction because their God is their stomach and their mind is on earthly things. Some people just live for their appetites. And I don't just mean physical food, and this is you know, not a Weight Watchers class here. I'm talking about people who just want to fulfill every desire they have. Material, physical, sensual. That can become an idol. What does God want from us? 
Well, you might want to write down just three verses, okay? Number one, 1 Corinthians 3.10. Jesus says, build your life with what won't burn up. 1 Corinthians 3.10. He says, according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I laid the foundation and built, but every man take heed how he builds. For a foundation can no one lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And everyone's work will be revealed. What are you building your life with? Are you building it with the wood, hay, and stubble of just for this world that's going to be burned up? Or are you building your life with the gold and silver and precious stones, the gold of seeking God first and and the precious stones and silver of sacrifice, of giving our time and our talents and our resources to God before they get dissipated and burned up here? Second passage, 2 Corinthians 5.10. Not only remember Jesus said that we are to build with his materials, but secondly, Jesus says our life is a stewardship. He's going to ask us to give an account for it. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says we're all going to stand one by one before Jesus Christ. And he's going to let everyone know once and for all who we really live for, ourselves or for him. And that's decided one moment, one day, one week, one month at a time, living in light of eternity. Finally, the last passage is Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Jesus said our life is a race, and we should watch out to keep the rules, stay in the boundaries, and listen to this, keep your baggage at a minimum. Did you know that's what life is like? You know what Jesus said? Seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, chapter 11 of Hebrews, lay aside every weight and the sin that besets us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus. He said, if if anything trips you up in life, get rid of it. If anything holds you back and it keeps getting caught. And the metaphor here was the men wearing their long robes and, and they would take them and they would tie them up and they would tuck the robe into their belt so they could run without having their skirt trip them. He says, Christians regularly go through life and see if we've kind of piled up around us so much baggage that we can't say yes lord yes to your will and to your way yeah it's a nice course can you really do it i mean can you really pull up stakes and do god's will or do you have to say well lord just five more years you know i just got five-year plan i'll have all this paid off and i'll have this investment then i'll do your will and your way god says keep the baggage to a minimum so you can follow me. How should we live? What does God want us to do? Say yes to his will and his way and let his spirit speak to us through his word. We know the world's going to end. We know there's seven years from the beginning to the end, so don't plan on it happening next year. It might feel like it, but it's not going to. But we need to say yes to the Lord and know what he wants us to do. 